Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Engine Hall. Today, we're going to take a look at a new release from Skull Trains with a Dash 940C. Conducted today, Mr. Uh, Mark Voigt. What are we looking at today? Looking at the Dash 9 from Skull Trains. We're going to take a look at today. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, matter of fact, how many Skull Trains do you have? Five. Five? <laughs> Five. Wow. How Three of them are the same model. Three of Same model, different number. Wow. Which ones are they? The same ones? Yeah. Dash nines. Dash nine, hey. And those guys love them dash nines. So I got what, three myself? I got three dash nines and two tier fours. Two tier fours? Oh my god. You know, I gotta look at the video. I got all them tier fours. So, yep, what we're gonna do is take a look at the model. Me and Mr. Um, Mark here, we're gonna wait for our genie to show up. So, let me have it.
Here's the locomotive back in 2002. Let me take a look. Air conditioning system there. You can get your under warranty, like correct font. Got the NS. But the NS model does not have the engine designation, but you have labeling here. Press the correct location. But when the model's missing, just leave them there. Looks good. Let's see, let's zoom in a little bit more. Now, this could be up a little bit more, but yeah, it could be up a little more. See the door handle there, you can barely make it up, but it's there. Let's see, you got the NS. It's good. The one here, four, it's good. One up there, two. Then look at the ready sections, all different. But if you take a look, there's two, blank, one, blank, one. But it's definitely have a label in here that's not there, it's missing. And you have your label in there. Let's take another look at a photo of this locomotive in uh, 2003 in March. Watch the trucks, you got the struts on the rear and the front axle. You got the detail part. Just there is pretty cool. Now on the number boards, uh, you have the correct font there. You got the silver case and headlight there. Now you just your grab lines here, the sand filler hatches. Uh, that's good there. No labeling here as pro prototype. Okay, good. Then you have your handrails, which is good. The correct amount of stanchions in the correct position. It's here on the Wokemon, pretty good. And you get your anti climbing here, the little white label here. Then your center sill is uh, black all the way around per prototype. Now, Scout Trains does not fit the electrical jumper cord in the correct location, but you see where it is here on the prototype. It can be easily uh, fixed by taking them out, putting the detail west end. And this location's here and also right in the center. And just got to put a piece of styrene to cover up the holes, paint it black. Specifically, I believe it's an engine black from Floquil, which is right here. Use this black here, paint it straight out the bottle, and it would match perfectly. Have a photo of this locomotive in 2006 here. Here, pretty much. See, you know the detail uh, parts here on the locomotive because obviously the stenciling is not going to be uh, correct. You know, pretty much like the trucks goes, uh, the cab itself, like the bell, fuel filler, the breather, fuel tank, trucks, the rear trucks. And then some of the logos, like the NS logo here with the um, labels, because it's got the handbrake. Some labels are there, some not. But uh, pretty much, um, that's pretty much what it is and stuff. You know, I mean, the model looks uh, pretty good. We have a photo of this locomotive in uh, March 14, 2010. Stenciling in here. Now, that's the numbers that came with the locomotive. What I did was, of course, I added the engine destination, the watch step. And I did the best I can do here with the center sill with the uh, white came out pretty good. Um, of course, the model did not come with this stencil here on the electrical cabinet there. Since it's there in the correct location, um, this inspiration I use here for this uh, logo here, that yeah, came out all right. Then here's the stencil and decals here on the uh, locomotive uh, as they uh, are. So this is pretty much close to the model. A reason why I picked this one here, because it, this didn't have an electrical uh, readout here in this uh, time period. So this is my 2010 locomotive. Now here's a photo of this locomotive in March 24, 2010. Now here, what I did was, I left the uh, factory decals on, but I did add a couple here and move this one over to this side here. As you can see, I added the engine destination there. You no, know, everything's there. Uh, I think I came out pretty good. Re pretty much matched the uh, prototype here. And uh, this is what I used the insp inspiration to weather the model. You can see here, I did the best I can do, but it came out okay, you know. Here's a photo that I uh, used for inspiration to weather my model. Here's a photo that we have here in the April 29, 2015 of this locomotive. What I did was basically replicated the model exactly as or best as I could before I added the decals here on this locomotive. Even went as far as in 
making the cuts here on the center sill as this per prototype and the best of my ability there of course detail was uh, added to this locomotive because it did not come with a uh, emergency shut off switch and also an electrical readout so there's parts that I added onto this locomotive to bring it to 2015. Also here we have uh, more labeling here. Um, got the horse head scheme there I put on there from Shell Scale. Blading is there on the correct location. If you take a look at that, you see all there. And uh, what I did not have, I did not have this EOT holder there for that truck. But pretty much all the stenciling is there. I did even paint this uh, safety valve blue. Here, here's the full token on the conductor side or fireman side of this uh, locomotive back in February 28, 2014. In, uh, Arendelle, Alabama. Now once again, as it is per prototype that I added the labeling here, added a center cell, even though I cut the center cell as it is on a prototype that I did here. Added a stencil in here. Also the electrical readout, just added there in the correct location. Got the correct color warning labels all in the correct location. Even here, and added a decal here. So, pretty much, this locomotive represents this prototype very well, in my opinion.